Okay, that's good enough. I can start it from there. Thanks. Yes, sir. Here at Sun and Fun last year, there was an aircraft that attracted, well, so much attention we kind of couldn't believe it. And in fact, I couldn't believe it either because <laughs> this airplane is so light and so unique. We just had to talk to this man standing next to me. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking to Brian Austin, who has created something he calls the lightning bug. And light is a key part of that word and there's a reason for it. You made some changes to it this year. We want to hear about those, but give us the, uh, the one minute pitch on what the aircraft was about last year. Last year, this was a, uh, the, the introduction of it was just to prove that model airplane engines had gotten so big that I could fly behind them. <laughs> so um, I blew up a model airplane that I'd been working on designing for you know, 25 years really um, to the size that it could carry me and, and put around the backyard. Now you're you're an old RC guy. You've been doing that for a long time. You've got a lot of experience with that. Which anybody can tell by looking at this airplane. In fact, all the modelers that have come by have said, "Didn't we uh, build that with a Carl Goldberg Falcon or Eagle or you know that same process?" <laughs> they know and, the hardware right away. Huh? Right, exactly. And I guess the software in some cases. But <laughs> well, so I got to repeat something you just said in case people look and they go, "Well, those are some pretty small engines. Do they actually do the job?" They're not just small engines, those are literally model airplane engines, is that right? <laughs> literally. Those are uh, off the shelf, remote control, intended engines, thousand dollars a piece. And now that would have to be for a pretty big RC, would it not? Certainly. Yeah, that, what that's what, what kind they, of RC would use probably one of those engines? Yes, um, the 50, 60 pound scale, half scale remote control airplanes, they do incredible things 50, with. 60 pound remote yeah, it's control. Awesome. Well, that's not a lot less than what this airplane weighs. Give me the basic specs on the airplane, Brian. The airplane came in at 140 pounds last year, <laughs> and I haven't reweighted it since I've put a couple of mods on it, and, but uh, they've been pretty minor, so I'm certainly within less than 150 pounds now. <laughs> Again, I gotta repeat that. 150 pound airplane with two engines that can carry this man and flies very well. We saw you fly it. This is not an imaginary project. That's right, actually it flies very, very well. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I have a neighbor standing right over there watching me and I terrorize his backyard <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it was really fun flying. to watch you fly it last year. Let's talk about the couple of changes you've made to it. I'm calling this lightning bug too, just because I had to call it something. And I don't know if that's what you call it or not, but it looks to me like you got different wing tips and I see something different about the engines and I don't know what else, but why don't you take us through what you've done to the airplane in the last year? Well, um, Refining in the last year, I had a friend that weighed a little more than I did that wanted to fly it. Okay. So uh, his name was Jim Bob, so I call these my Jim Bob wing tips, <laughs> my Jim Bob extensions. So you actually added some surface. I mean, I could see you did, but that was the purpose, was to carry a little more weight. A little more weight, yes, sir. Um, I, if you recall from last year, I'm really not an ultralight guy, but when I read the rules that said that you could go 62 miles an hour, is that correct? Yeah, 63, yep. Okay, well, I'll 55 designed... knots is the official number, so. I see. Well, I tried to design around that, and I got real close to it with the original wing design, so I was proud that I could go up and use my handheld device, iPhone in indicator, and, and, and get that 60-something miles an hour. I was like, yeah, I nailed it. But... Realistically, I just put around the backyard, so it doesn't matter how fast I go. So, by adding a little bit of wing, um, I can slow the airplane yeah, so down. It's a few square feet, you know, this times two is a. It, it makes a 20 pound difference for sure for a, ah, if you're a guy that okay. weighs 190 pounds instead of 170. Okay. Um, so, that, that gives me not only the extra lift to carry somebody a little bit heavier, but it means that I can fly the airplane a little slower. It means I can just pull the engines back a little bit more and cruise. It's a little bit quieter for my neighbors that I'm buzzing over their heads all the time. So, um, so it just works better. Really fun, really fun. And you got this kind of interesting, I don't know if the camera really catches it, but that's close to a 45 degree <laughs> angle of forward sweep <laughs> on the tip. I mean, the whole airplane is attention getting. This just adds to that quality. Well, um, this is a swept wing. So if I just add more wing tilt, more area gets put behind the airplane, meaning that I need, need to move the center of gravity back. And I don't want to add weight to a 140 pound airplane. So 
by sweeping the wing tip forward, I at least mitigate all that I can by by moving the so CG any farther. So you actually shift the center of pressure a little bit back forward then? Huh? I'm trying to. You know, it doesn't make up for the whole wing, but at least it doesn't hurt me more by moving ah, it doesn't make it, it any worse back, at least. Right. And by adding that extra back there, I still... I had to increase the lift of the canard to compensate for Okay, it. so this is a little bigger than last year too then? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, last year I had uh, a stabilized piece on it on the outboard tip and then the inboard move. This year, the whole thing moves. Oh, um, I see. Okay. But it's but the main thing is it's just more area. I've got yeah, more, yeah. more wing area and I've got more canard area and that allows me to keep the same center of gravity. Beautiful. That's, uh, that's clever design. The whole thing is, but obviously, so you're just continuing that as you increase to it. Now, is it the same engine we saw last year, Brian? It, it is. Last year I had stock mufflers on it, though, and uh, this year I did put this exhaust system. They call it a can. The model airplane guys call it a can. Okay. Um, and it picked up a little bit of RPM. I, I probably 300 RPM difference. Oh, really? But the main thing was that it made it so much more quiet. Ah, okay. I didn't find it noisy last year, but I understand, you know, we're here at a place where there's lots of airplane noise, so you kind of get used to it. Flying around a quiet neighborhood, I suppose that gets a little more obvious. So. We did talk about it uh, being two-stroke noisy, but it, that's just all it is. It's just two strokes. I yeah, mean, it's just right. like any other two-stroke. The, uh, the interesting thing, you know, I learned so much from building this airplane, every aspect of it. What I learned from this exhaust is that at idle, there's a huge difference. At full really? throttle, there's not near as much difference because now I know that I'm getting much more wing or uh, propeller noise than I am exhaust noise. Oh, okay. So Part of the discovery you went through with this process. So until I figure out a way to slow this down, you know, then, then. That, that's the determining noise So if you wanted to get factor. the noise even less, you'd be looking at doing something with the propeller. A bigger prop, slower RPM, that cuts out prop noise. But of course, now you're re-engineering something that the airplane was built around a simple off-the-shelf remote control airplane <laughs> engine. So I'm going to leave it the way it is because it's fine. The neighbors don't complain. It's just <laughs> They just know when I'm out flying. <laughs> I guess so. That's not a bad thing, I guess. <laughs> so I want to touch on a couple of numbers you mentioned last year. The engines are a thousand bucks. Yes, sir. So you got two of them. So there's two thousand dollars. What did you have in the whole rest of the airplane? It's a remarkably <laughs> low number. I love to have you repeat. <laughs> it cost me about $1,000 to build the airplane. So here's a $3,000 <laughs> airplane. Now, $3,000 plus some pretty good skill and experience. Grant you that. I couldn't do it, but I'm so impressed with that, Brian. That's really great. We're really glad you brought it back here. Folks, this is not a commercial project. This is your private, personal project. Experiment. And uh, you've done this once before with another aircraft. What was that? That was the Woodpecker. And uh, tell us just a couple of things about that, just to kind of flesh out your um, design career here a bit. Well, the Woodpecker showed that you could build a light sport. That's a 700 pound airplane, I think is what it was, empty weight, with an O235 in it that uh, had great performance. It'll outrun, outdo, outlift any, you know, Cub Chief Champ, like, um, like, uh, Gosh, um, Luscom or you know, anything, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything okay. in that type category. Yeah. Um, but it cost me a three thousand dollars to build that airplane. It's got an <laughs> autopilot like this one has. <laughs> yeah, right. That's Imagine this. All on top of everything else, it's also got autopilot. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Really? But there you go. Um, so it was the first one that I put the autopilot in. That's derived from a flight controller from a drone and model ah, airplane okay. servos. Um, <laughs> it's got a magnetic centering device for. Um, to, to center control surfaces instead of having to fight springs. It's got wow. uh, bungee emergency brake, which is doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty cool because um, it doesn't weigh anything and it's a it's sure, an emergency sure. brake. It's got um, it's got good performance numbers. It's just a, a good all around fun, you know, go somewhere airplane. I brought it, it down here twice. It's a little more conventional and, than this one does. This is a real sort of out there airplane. I can't make up my mind if this is a spaceship or an ultralight, <laughs> but uh, but whatever it is, it looks cool and it attracts attention. We're glad you're here, Brian. So once again, welcome back to uh, Sun and Fun. And uh, we we'll hope we'll keep seeing some more creative stuff out of your Obviously, a very I, agile mind. I've got some up here. I just, right. I just need some time to get I, I in, see in the, the wheels in the turning right now through your <laughs> eyes. So, very good. Dan, thank you for all your help. My pleasure, Brian. Thank you for coming back to Sun and Fun. Lots of information about not only Lightning Bug and Lightning Bug 2 and Woodpecker, but all kinds of other things that you can buy from various vendors in the affordable space of aviation. You can find a lot of that on buydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Brian Austin and myself here at Sun and Fun.